friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time and I'm here for another this and that video and if you're new, these kind of videos, the this and that ones, though I do focus on several different topics, mostly what it is is not usually to show you how to do things, but to show you what I have going on this week here in rain country and to direct you back to some old videos where I talk about how to make some of the things I'm going to be showing you or to let you know of upcoming videos or to give you an update on different experiments that I've been working on. So let's get started on the things going on today. So right here you can see I have six pints of pumpkin. Now this all came from one pumpkin that I grew. I did, it's not the only pumpkin I grew, but it was the last pumpkin I had to deal with. I finally baked it up. It was still really good just sitting back in our rec room because it stays colder in there. We don't keep our rec room heated on the other side of the house. So it just was sat back there all this whole time was still good, but I thought it was time to finally deal with it. And so I've got it jarred up. Now I'm not canning this. From what I understand, I've never tried it, it's really not a good idea to can your pumpkin if you've already pureed it or mashed it because it's just too dense to ensure that you're going to get the heat all the way through to the center. But you can cube up your squash and then can it. But what I do, since a lot of times when I'm dealing with squash, I'm just doing it in little parts at a time instead of a big batch to can anyway. I like to puree it first so it's all ready to go and then freeze it. And now that I've switched to freezing things in jars, it does take up more room in the freezer, but I like that I don't have to depend on my doggone uh, food saver, which breaks down every two years. And then uh, also I've, I'm getting away from using the plastics and I can just keep recycling my jars. Now I do have a trick to freezing things in jars that uh, are gonna prevent it from cracking the jars. And one of those things is making sure, and I do have a video on this that I'll go ahead and link to below where I show other things that I freeze as well. But I can show you real quick here. It's just a simply a matter of when you put the lids on, make sure that it's loose. Just set the set your canning lid on top and then set your band there just so it's there. And then once your your things are fully frozen, then you can tighten it down. Now I have these these bands on just not real loose yet because I had them in the refrigerator until because I had to bake the pumpkin in parts and then I wanted to shoot this video to show you how much I got out of this one pumpkin which right here that's enough to make six pies or 12 batches of my iced pumpkin cookies, which I'm hoping to do a video on later this week. So be watching for that video. If, if all goes well, be watching for that video to come out soon. So anyway, um, yeah, I put the, the band on loose until it fully freezes. Otherwise, if you put it on tight, what's gonna happen is the things in there, especially something like this, where it's already a puree form, is really filling up that jar, got it packed in there pretty good, it's going to expand as it freezes and then it's going to break your jar. So putting the band on loose allows it to push the air and everything up and out and then you can tighten your bands down the next day. And then the other safety precaution I take because I like to store the jars next to each other, especially if they're in a place where it's in a movable type shelf and you might move it around and they might crack against each other. Though there's many other things that you can do. Uh, you can make little pouches or whatever you want to do. The simplest way for me is I just take strips of flannel and fold it in half and make sure that they're wide enough to cover the whole outside of the jar. I find whenever we go to garage sales, I one of the things I'm always looking for is flannel. People usually are selling all kinds of flannel, usually in the form of older sheets. And so in that case, when it's older sheets, these are the kind of things you can get them for real cheap, 50 cents or a dollar for a whole sheet or even a whole set of sheets. And then I just rip them into strips and wrap my jars like this. And then take another chunk that I've ripped off for the sake of a tie. 
and then just tie it on there to hold it in place. So that way when the jars are sitting up next to each other, I don't have to worry about them, you know, smacking against each other when I'm moving stuff around in there and getting broke. Because I actually have had that happen where I wasn't thinking, I thought I had them in a pretty safe place, but then I had some jars that had milk in it that had frozen some goat's milk we used to get from a friend. And I had it in a, one of those sliding type uh, things in our chest freezer and I was sliding it around and just not thinking about it. And I had those jars in there not padded and they cracked against each other. And I ended up losing like three quarts of milk because of that, which was really, really frustrating because, you know, ghost milk isn't cheap. Even though we got it for free from a friend because she was very generous and that was her way of saying thanks for our for the YouTube videos that we put out, uh, still, it was valuable. The raw goat's milk, come on, that stuff isn't cheap. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'll be finishing this out and then getting these put away in my freezer. And then when I'm ready to make cookies or pie or dip out of this, which I do have a recipe for the pumpkin dip, by the way, then I just pull out a jar and you know, there's two cups in each pint, so it's perfect, it's all ready to go. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say about flannels, if you know, if you're like us and you like to go shopping secondhand, anytime you see flannels of any kind, grab them because especially if they're in a sheet form because there's so many things you can do with flannel now if the flannel is in really nice shape and looks good you can use it to make a nice table napkins that are really great for uh because they're so absorbent you can use it to make a paper towel replacement for using around the kitchen you can use them for just shop rags they're so absorbent one of the other big things i use these for is though i I don't make them for myself anymore because I don't need to because <laughs> I'm that old. I do use these for the lining inside of feminine napkins whenever I get a custom order because I don't put them up on my store, but when I get custom orders, sometimes people will do a custom order for them. This is what I'll use, about eight layers of, of a flannel, very, very absorbent. So when you can get it like this, it, you're going to save yourself a lot of money if you like making your own feminine napkins. Then buying some of that expensive stuff you can get online. Uh, just flannel. In fact, the very first uh, feminine napkins I made for myself, I designed my own pattern years ago. <laughs> Obviously, I was still having a cycle. But I, I just f had found an old flannel sheet at a garage sale that I bought for, I think, 25 cents. And it was a queen size flat. And I actually bought it because I was thinking eventually I'd use it as a backing for a quilt because I like to make those denim quilts and then back them with flannel. But then I decided to go ahead and use it to make my own feminine napkins and that's all I used was the flannel, a couple layers and the shape that I cut out plus several layers folded over like I showed you there for the inside and they worked great for me for many years. Just a little tip, don't pass up those that flannel when you see it. We always grab it because no matter what it looks like, it can have use in something. Even if it's just a shop rag, which is gonna work better than a lot of the shop rags you're gonna buy and you're gonna save money even if you end up throwing them out because they're just you know filled up with oil. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was my homemade hair conditioner, which I finally tried for the first time today. And so far, I'm really happy with it. I mean, you know, it's just my first try, but I love how soft my hair felt, even as I was using it. And then after rinsing my hair, I could just feel the difference. It just left a nice softness to my hair. And so this was made out of marshmallow root, homegrown, and my own aloe vera plants. And basically what I did was I made a vinegar. Now here was the drawback to it. It really doesn't have a wonderful smell. Something about the aloe vera and the marshmallow root combined just doesn't smell great. It's not horrible, it's just not great. So the next time I make this, I'm gonna wait until my lavender flowers come in and I'm going to be adding some lavender flowers, some rose petals, and some calendula, calendula flowers like I normally would for making a floral vinegar because uh, that's normally what I used to rinse my hair with is my homemade floral vinegars, but I'm pretty much out of those other than the rose and rhubarb one. And so what I'm going to do is just start the vinegar like that, like I would a floral vinegar, but put in the aloe vera and the marshmallow root. Now what the marshmallow root does and the aloe vera is, you, you can't really tell here, but it adds a certain thickness to it. And, it, you know, it's almost, I don't really want to say gelatinous, it's actually a little bit slimy, which sounds gross, but when I'm putting it on my hair, it, uh, it I actually used it straight. I didn't dilute it down with water like I normally do with my vinegars. I use it straight and 
again really happy with it so i think by using especially the lavender flowers because they have the the strongest scent to it that's also very a pleasant smell uh, if i use those in there i think that's going to make a just a nice smelling as well as great hair conditioner and uh, it's cheap it's free you know just some rainwater and some herbs a little bit of sugar to turn it to vinegar so when that happens down the road so it'll probably be sometime early summer uh when i go to make that i will be sure to shoot a video on it so you can see how i do that now the next thing i want to talk about has to do with a current event that's going on keep in mind i'm always at least three weeks ahead of this ahead on my videos and actually the time that i'm shooting this i'm actually almost four weeks ahead so it's january 27th that i'm shooting this video and a few days ago uh probably well it's probably going on five days now was when we found out we had the first case of the coronavirus that showed up here in washington state now i'm going to be honest with you that at this time i don't think it's that big of a scare i'm not that concerned about it and who knows between now and the time this video comes out things may have changed but um i feel the same way about this as i did about the swine flu and the big scare that was going around and the avian flu and that big scare was going around and whatever other sars and all that kind of stuff I just don't panic. I do not think these are going to be things that we have to concern ourselves with. However, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be taking some protective measures, you know, like washing our hands, uh, avoiding public as much as possible, but when we are taking whatever protective measures we can once we're out there, washing our hands as often as possible, cleaning any device, you know, like our phones, you know kind of wipe them down every so often you know your cell your cell phones any kind of door handles anything like that uh and obviously trying not to touch your face as much as possible but it's going to happen i know all of us you know we get a little itch in our eye or whatever it just happens sometimes it can even be a nervous twitch so that's why it's also important to make sure you wash your hands frequently but some protective measures that we take i do have a video that i did a few months ago on um, some natural cold and flu remedies i will go ahead and link to that video in the description box down below don't forget to hit show more and then one of the things i didn't mention in that particular video was colloidal silver so we do make our own colloidal silver as well as our own colloidal copper and we also sell the generators on the store we're now carrying the wide mouth as well as a regular mouth however if you'd rather make one yourself we also have a video on how you can make your own colloidal silver generator and uh patrick actually went the extra mile with the ones that we sell and i like these so much better than the original design he had he fabricates his metal pieces by hand and sands them he puts a lot of time into just making these metal pieces but it holds the wiring securely into the lid so it so these the alligator clips aren't flopping around and they're not uh it's not going to sink down too far into the water but anyway so uh and, and i do want to say a lot of times when i put out a video and i talk about these up on our store oftentimes the video comes out and we'll sell out of them really quickly and so if that happens because of this video then uh just be patient we always are making more and getting them put up in the store we do have to order parts like the wiring and the lids themselves so sometimes sometimes we and the battery packs because we sell them with the battery packs not with the silver you have to buy that yourself but we do have links to where you can get the silver we do also sell the copper rods though that's the only thing we we sell we looked into selling the the copper the silver rods but it it really wouldn't be worth it it would actually be probably more cost effective for you just to go ahead and buy them from the link that i'll put down below if you're interested or even buying the silver bars uh through silver.com is where we got our bars and that's what i use but it's actually cheaper to get the silver rods but anyway so uh we do like try especially if we know we're going to be out in public especially when we know there's junk going around we take a shot of this uh, like a whole shot of two ounces of the colloidal silver in the morning and or before we go out anywhere and then another thing that i've been doing is the uh and this is basically an update is i have a recipe on this this is a spicy honey infused garlic so a little different than what some people do and uh I, I really like this. There's d different variations, but I have a recipe video out that I'll link to down below as well. You can check this out. So this is something, again, that we'll take 
before we go out in public or you know when we know junk's going around take a big spoonful of this so i plan on making some more of this today because i'm really happy with it i i like the spices and stuff in there believe it or not it has a really nice flavor if you've never tried honey infused garlic you might be surprised uh, not everyone's going to like it but i love it i think it's delicious and then adding the extra spices in there just gives it that much more immune boosting properties in fact another idea which i didn't do is even considering adding some dried elderberries into your blend as well but i use elderberries in several other forms i i do make a syrup out of the elderberries I've done elderberry water kefir. I've done, um, I do a lot of elderberry tea. Anytime I'm, that we're trying to prepare for, you know, to just protect ourselves from whatever's going around. And in that video where Patrick is, uh, shows you how to make the this kind of generator, he actually shows two different kinds because we have another uh, solar powered generator that we have that we use. But he also shows how to make the colloidal silver, even though I'm the one that usually does it. Uh, he does show how to do it in that video. All right, and then another thing is, I just shot a video that's already published, so I will link to it down below. And that is how to make your own herbal pain relief capsules. I have a video on how to make a pain relief extract, but for those who would rather take something in a capsule form, as you can see, there's two different colors in there. So they're two different blends. So it's all gonna be up to you. And I give some various ideas of what you can try depending on your health needs or what you have handy. And uh, so I'll link that video. Go ahead and check it out if you're interested in learning how I made these. And then with that in mind, uh, one of the things I need to get around to doing, uh, hopefully today, uh, maybe tomorrow, depending on how busy I am, is making some more supplements. I like to make my own supplements out of various herbs and spices because, you know, if I'm, if I'm concerned I'm not getting enough in the foods that I'm eating, then I like to have my own supplements. And I have a video out on this, but I do plan on doing an update video in the near future. But I'll go ahead and link to the older one down below if, you, if you're interested in what I've got in here. I don't even remember if I, if I have everything in that video as to what I have in here. But like one of the things is Moringa. I've got turmeric. This here is a, a new one I added. It's not so much a supplement. It's more uh, in case we need it. And this is a black walnut hull powder. So uh, if you're suspect that you might have any kind of parasite or whatever, this is a good one to take. But it also has a lot of other good health benefits. But I got the, so I got the black walnut powder for doing various things with, and it's also really good for giving to your ch chickens or your pets if they have any kind of parasite. But anyway, yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing today is making some more supplements, mostly the Moringa and the turmeric supplements and probably the eggshell ones, because sometimes I like to take my eggshells powder just in liquid and drink it down so i'm saving on my capsules but every now and then it's nice to have it in capsule form as well and then a couple other things i wanted to mention before i close out this video is that i have a lot of people that go to my etsy store looking for my skirts because i'll see some of my videos like where i'm shooting the craft time chats and i'm making a, yet another skirt and so they go to my store looking for skirts and they don't see them that's because it's actually rare that i have any skirts that stay up there for long sometimes they can sell within 10 minutes of me putting them up every once in a while like at the time i'm shooting this video i actually have three skirts up on the store but most likely all three of them will be sold by the time you see this video if that happens you you keep going in there and you're like why does she never have she i always see her making skirts but she never has any on the store well that's you know that's twofold one because they sell out so quickly and there's only me you know i'm the only one making the skirts so sometimes patrick will help me rip out fabrics and get them ready but uh usually it's just me and uh you know i don't i don't <laughs> i don't have any slave labor doing the work for me and also because i often get custom orders for something specific or like i have a lady that's having me make her an all uh, flax linen skirt and so and that might be something i might eventually for those who are interested uh, offer on the store but you have to also realize that flax linen is a lot more expensive than just regular cotton like I usually am using in my skirts and so um, I would have to charge more for those you know just to cover for the cost of the fabric as well as my time but anyway if you're if you're not seeing what your the things any of the stuff that we talk about if you're not seeing it on the store simply uh, send me a message through Etsy and say you'd like to place a custom order and we'll we'll get working on that if it's something i can do depending on what your 
what you're asking. So, you know, and that includes, again, the feminine napkins, aprons, uh, whatever. Oh, yes. And then the other thing was I do sometimes get people that come to my store that are from outside the U.S. I do actually make custom orders for people who live outside the U.S. The reason I don't put that stuff up on the store like that is because it depends on what people are buying, what they're going to combine together. I have to know exactly what the weight is going to be before I can decide what the shipping is going to be because something like a skirt because they're so my skirts are so voluminous there's so much fabric in them they can have as much as seven to eight yards of fabric in one skirt and that can actually be a lot heavier than you think it's going to be and so when i go to ship them off to countries i've checked into places like australia for example it would cost me 75 dollars to ship the skirt to australia and then to canada it's somewhere around 30 to you know to forty dollars it just depends on how i'm shipping it and where exactly it's going i do try to find the lowest uh price for shipping that i can for shipping outside the u.s but that's the thing i want to try to work with you and find out the best price and not just put some flat rate price that you know that could be absolutely outrageous or if I myself get cheated because I'm having to make a guess on each one of the items, even though Etsy can figure out some of that stuff for me, I still don't fully trust them because if people are ordering several things at once, that's gonna change the overall cost of the shipping. And again, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to give people the best deal on shipping without cheating myself. Cause I have had it happen before where I shipped a skirt off to Canada and I had guessed it was going to cost $30. And so that's what she paid for the shipping and it cost 36. So I ended up losing $6 on that. And so I'm trying to be fair to both of us. And that's why I do that. So if you're outside the, of the U.S. and you're interested, just contact me through a private message on Etsy, you know, and you may just go, well, gosh, I can't afford the shipping on that skirt. So let alone the skirt itself. So I can't do it. I'll totally understand. But I want you to know that that option is there in case you are interested. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed my this and that video for the week. And this is, by the way, semi-weekly. I don't always get one out every week, but it's pretty close to that. So anyway, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.